Alright guys, Dominic here for KitGuru, and after our initial launch day coverage of the RTX 4070 Ti, today we are back with another look at NVIDIA's latest GPU. This time around, we are checking out the Palit Gamerock OC model, offering the same blinktastic design we have come to expect from a card of this series, as well as a hefty 165MHz factory overclock and support for dual BIOS. Is the 4070 Ti then really as bad as everyone says, or could this card be worth considering if you're in the market for a new GPU? If we kick things off then with a look at the design of the card, as I alluded to in that introduction, it does have the same shroud design as the 4080 and 4090 Gamerock models that we've already reviewed. That means we find a black plastic shroud, but with two large brush metal plates which do add more of a premium feel. It's also impossible to miss those crystal-like plastic RGB diffusers, and those occupy almost the entire front of the card. We can also get a look at those three 90mm fans, and these use Palette's so-called Gale Hunter fan blade design, featuring new winglet fantail technology that Palette claims helps to increase airflow concentration. Of course, it's the RGB lighting which really grabs your attention straight away, and out of the box, it does this rainbow style effect as you can see here. You can actually synchronize the RGB lighting with your motherboard though, using the included ARGB cable. So while we've established that the overall shroud of this 4070 Ti is basically the same as the 4080 version, the 4070 Ti is actually a little bit smaller. Granted, it is still a big card, measuring in at 328.9 by 137 by 64.4 millimeters, but that does make it about half a slot thinner than the 4080 version. It also weighs in just under 1.6 kilos, again, making it 350 grams lighter than its bigger brother. Pallet does also still include the nifty height adjustable GPU support bar, and this screws into the end of the card to prevent any sag. Flipping the card over then, we get a look at the full length metal backplate, but there are a number of cutouts which do allow airflow to pass directly through the heatsink. As we'd expect from a Gamerock OC card, there is also a dual BIOS switch positioned just next to the IO bracket. The performance mode is default out of the box, and this offers a slightly higher fan speed, increased clock, and an adjustable power limit compared to the silent BIOS, but we do test both of those modes later in this review. We also get a look at the 12 volt high power connector, and Palette does supply a dual 8 pin adapter in the box, while we can also see standard display output, so that means three DisplayPort 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1. It's actually when looking at the PCB where we see the biggest point of difference between the 4070 Ti and the 4080 Gamerock models. Palette here has opted for a very compact PCB, but it still sports a 12-phase VRM for the GPU and a 2-phase design for the memory. On semi, NCP302150 MOSFETs are used across the board, and these are rated for 50 amps. Pallet is also using OnSemi's NCP81610 controller for the GPU VRM, and there's a UPI UP9529Q controller which handles the memory. As for the cooler then, it's interesting to note that Pallet is not using a vapor chamber. Instead, the GPU and memory contact with a base plate, and this sits on top of eight 6mm heat pipes. Two separate base plates are also used to contact with the VRM. Lastly, we can also see that Palette has not positioned any thermal pads on the underside of the backplate, something which can just help to spread the heat over the backplate. That is going to do it though for our look at the overall design and the aesthetic, so of course it's time to move on to our testing. For this, we're using our regular GPU test system which is powered by MSI. And this is built around Intel's i9-12900K CPU, paired with the MSI MEG Z690 Unified motherboard. We've also got 32GB of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory, while all testing was done using the MSI MPG321 URQD 4K monitor. 
Kicking things off then with thermal performance, there isn't actually a whole lot between the three 4070 Ti cards that we have tested so far. The Palette GameRock OC saw a peak GPU temperature around the 63 degree mark, and that is a very good place to be, with the hotspot running between 73 to 74 degrees. You may also have noticed that there's actually very little difference between the performance and the silent BIOS, as despite the names, the fan curve is actually almost identical between the two, but more on that in just a moment. Meanwhile, memory temperatures are also absolutely fine. They are the warmest we've seen from a 4070 Ti so far, but with temperatures of 64 and 66 degrees, it honestly really doesn't matter as this is still very cool running for GDDR6X. Back to the noise levels though, we did already mention how similar the performance and the silent BIOS modes are. As it turns out, we saw the performance BIOS run the fans just 1% faster under load, with speeds around 1320 RPM compared to 1275 RPM when using the silent BIOS. Such a small difference was actually imperceptible to my sound meter, but they are still both very good results, producing just 35 decibels of noise. And I'm also happy to confirm there was no audible coil whine during my testing. I had to increase fan speed up to 50% or 1850 RPM to produce 40 decibels of noise, which we use for our noise normalized testing. This saw the noise normalized thermals basically matching the Gigabyte Gaming OC, with the GameWalk OC seeing a peak GPU temperature of 58 degrees. All three 4070 Ti cards are in the same ballpark, so we're not talking massive differences, but clearly the GameWalk OC is a very efficient cooler design. Maybe slightly less so for the memory thermals, as the GameWalk OC's peak of 60 degrees is actually 6 degrees warmer than the Gigabyte Gaming OC, but again, a peak of 60 degrees is still absolutely fantastic for GDDR6X memory. As expected as well, power draw of the GameRock OC is very similar to other 4070 Ti's. It is 4 watts or so higher, possibly due to the slight increase in clock speed, but averaging 277 watts, this is very much in the area that we'd expect. Speaking of clock speed though, even with that 165 MHz factory overclock, in the real world, the GameRock OC averaged 2880 MHz over our 30 minute stress test, making it just 60 MHz faster than the Inno 3D ITIL X3 and the Gigabyte Gaming OC. So yes, it is faster, but only by a very small margin. Of course, that means over the five games we tested, the GameRock OC did technically prove to be the fastest 4070 Ti yet, but only by the absolute tiniest of margins. In fact, it was never more than 2% faster than the Gigabyte Gaming OC, so realistically, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two cards. Now, of course, it is still going to offer very solid frame rates at 1440p or 4K, just don't expect any significant gains due to the factory overclock. Manual overclocking, however, is a different story, and just like the Gigabyte Gaming OC, we actually had real success with the GameRock OC. For starters, we were once more able to push the memory slider as far as it would go in MSI Afterburner, adding 2000 MHz, and we also added 180 MHz to the GPU core. This resulted in a real world clock speed just shy of 3090 MHz, averaging 3086 MHz over our 30 minute stress test. This saw some pretty significant gains for the GameRock OC, as we got an 8% boost to performance in Cyberpunk 2077, a pretty staggering 12% frame rate increase in Horizon Zero Dawn, as well as an extra 10% performance in Resident Evil Village. Power draw only rose slightly to up to 305 watts, or a 10% increase, which honestly isn't bad at all. So with our third look at an RTX 4070 Ti, there's no doubt in my mind that Palette has done another excellent job with the GameRock OC. 
There are, however, some pretty significant concerns over pricing of the 4070 Ti as a whole, and these do need to be addressed. Starting off with the positives though, Palette's overall design really does continue to appeal. I personally absolutely love the flashy RGB lighting and those crystal-like diffusers. I can of course see that it's not going to be for everyone, but in my view, it really helps the card stand out from the crowd. Likewise, Palette's cooling performance is excellent, actually offering the best noise normalized thermals that we've seen so far, and it's also very quiet out of the box. You could even technically say that this is the fastest 4070 Ti that we've tested so far, but admittedly, the margins are very slim. Ultimately, as good as this card is, pricing is the real problem area for the RTX 4070 Ti. You may remember in my launch day review of this GPU that I said the card's overall value at the 799 baht MSRP wasn't terrible, but it wasn't fantastic either. However, since then, things have gone from bad to worse, and I was actually pretty shocked to see that while writing this review, Scan didn't have a single card listed at the £799 MSRP, while OC UK only had one, and even that was up for pre-order. Of all the models currently available, the average selling price for a 4070 Ti at Scan is £962, while it's only slightly lower at OC UK with an average of £928. If we go ahead and plug that data into our cost per frame chart, we can see that the 4070 Ti is basically the same value as an RTX 4080, and we really did criticize that GPU for offering very poor value overall. So clearly, something has gone badly wrong with the 4070 Ti's pricing. To be clear, this isn't a specific criticism of Palette, but 4070 Ti prices are just too high across the board. Palette did actually tell us that the MSRP for the GameRock OC model is £835, but considering that the Gaming Pro OC is already listed at £899, well, clearly the GameRock OC is realistically going to land well over £900. Ultimately, I still believe that the 4070 Ti at £799 isn't a bad buy. Now, granted, it isn't particularly amazing, but it isn't terrible either. The real problem we have is that pricing for this GPU is just way, way too high at the point where it really makes no sense for a consumer to go out and buy one of these GPUs at the current inflated prices. Anyway guys, that is going to do it for this review. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up and as always, let me know your thoughts down below. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and ding that notification bell so you won't miss when we upload a new video. We'd also love for you to come over to our Discord server which is linked in the description and while you're there you can also find a link to our brand new merch store. If you're feeling particularly generous as well, you could also find a link to our Patreon. But anyway, that is it for me guys. I'm Dominic Falkit Guru and I'll see you in the next video.